Hey, let me share. Okay. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. You're recording right now. No, it's... Most of my friends want a little peace. Some of my friends want a little silence. Even when we struggle and we get kicked down, we pick each other up with a little polish. All of my friends want a legacy. Don't want to be left out. Every time you think we get a little weak, we get a little bit stronger.
I'm sorry, y'all. It's so hard to stop this song. It's so dangerous. Come on, Cody. No more From the Netflix series, uh, either people. We don't want the life without the liberty. We don't want the life without the liberty. That's love that. Yes. Um, welcome everybody. I am uh joining you from my bedroom. Um, not my usual background. You'll see the map right here. Uh Larson and I have COVID for sure. Uh we're quarantining. Uh it's super light so far. We've had it for a few days now. Um, and so far the baby's fine. Baby doesn't have it. So, um, but we are, we're locked in here and we're gonna, we're gonna test the, test the strength of our relationship and our ability to work <laughs> also <laughs> from, the, from the same room. She's right there, right there. Um, so if you hear someone cough in the background is definitely, it's her, it's her, but we're going to make it work. We're going to make it work because uh that's what we do at cp we have our plans and our ideas of how things are going to go um and then that meets the reality of the world that we live in um and it doesn't stop us it just changes our plans and we keep going we keep going um we're going to talk about kobe protocols later because kobe pro protocols as cp defines them are great any trip that has been, uh, that has had the full CP protocols, no one has ever gotten COVID, never. And I think we've done like nine of them or something like that. Seven, I don't know. David will speak to this later. Um, this last trip we went on did not have the CP protocols and uh, we learned from that. So it was a good test uh, if, uh, if we should loosen some of those. The news is that we should not be loosening any CP protocols around COVID right now. Okay, just want everyone to know that. We tested it out, it doesn't work. Um, we're gonna hear a lot about field work today. Field work teams are flying, they are planning to fly, they are training and meeting. It's super exciting. Um, there's also been some changes to field work and we'll talk about those too. Uh, we're having David run the slideshow now so you're gonna we're gonna see how oh my gosh well done man well done <laughs> um welcome to the oh i see you made your own changes too to the the some of the verb okay so there's some stuff in here that's just gonna be like david edits that's exciting all right well that's what happens when i'm sick um <laughs> field work field work field work for the first three uh, cause that's what it needs to be. And next week, it'll be the same thing. It'll be our next month. It'll be the same thing. We're going to highlight folks who've traveled. We're going to have them tell you about their experiences. And then we're going to ask you to decide to travel. Uh, one of the cool things about this meeting is that this is the broader community meeting and it's everybody. It's anyone who wants to come. You don't have to be a volunteer. You don't have to be a lead. You don't have to be in the know, uh, to come to this meeting. This is kind of, there's some folks in this in the audience right now who kind of are brand new and they're like, I don't know about this CP thing. Um, so you're going to learn a little about, about who we are and maybe decide to take a trip with us. By the way, anybody new who wants to call on themselves right now, call themselves out in the audience here and, and just say hi. unmute if there's any any brave souls out there that want to say hello and tell us how they got here um i'm technically new i was in action academy a year ago but i just joined team arizona as the travel coordinator and um yeah in action academy i was on team texas with julia hi and jessica hi and um sasha uh was the advisor for lsj which i was in Thank you so much for letting me in. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to do more stuff with CP.
That is so damn cool. And I, I hope that the, you, you feel from the reception that not only is uh, Action Academy super appreciated, but you've got a, a network of people who are going to support you when, you when you come in. So welcome. Thank you. Cool. Okay, let's hop into the agenda. Okay, and we'll go to Action Academy at the end. We get an update from them at the end. Um, uh, so before we go to the next slide, David, uh, so there's there's been there's changes uh, in field work, changes in field work at the leadership level. Um, we're going no slides, okay? Um, at the leadership <laughs> level, and I think one of the things that I want to say about this is that I can't say everything that I want to say. I think that's that's a reality for folks. And one of the things that's that's really cool about being a, in a community of um, people who are more experienced than I am. Uh, many of you have worked in in industries for quite a while, and many of you are super accomplished and have led your own teams and your own um, businesses and your own organizations, and have given me some guidance on. on you know, my leadership at CP and I've been able to lean on some of you and look to you for direction and mentorship and um, change is constant at an organization that has people. And when it's um, doing the kind of work that we do, that's kind of heart and soul work, it's even harder. So um, uh, we are, we, uh, the email that went out today, this morning, mention the parting of ways with Hiba. Uh, Hiba helped to uh, roll out the brand new structure of fieldwork. Uh, fieldwork was a very organic space in the very beginning. It was kind of survival of the fittest. And in 20, um, after 2020, we realized we needed a brand new structure that could be more sustainable. Uh, Anita and Maggie designed that and Hiba helped to roll that out this year, this past year, 2021. Um, her contributions to the organization were pretty massive. And um, I think it's honest to say that Hiba didn't wanna go and we didn't want her to go. Um, and we ended up here. This is where we ended up. So I just wanna acknowledge that piece. Now, unrelated to that, but related to it, it's all wrapped in one ball of complexity that is humanity. And we're just, we just roll with every single piece of it is a celebration of two people who are joining us, um, who are joining us independent of, of, of the other decision. These folks were on the way in anyways. Um, and so we, we want to shine a light on them because they're two fantastic individuals that deserve every piece of our support and our celebration for them. Um, one of them is brand spanking new to CP, to the CP community. She's from all the way on the East Coast, where they're, they don't do uh, passive aggression over there. They don't do Seattle nice over there. Um, and the other one is from here and she's been with us for years. She's been in our orbit for years. Can you throw that slide up, David? Um, Jamie Lynn Wheeler and Victoria Elias. Uh, the other thing is that these two pictures, the quality of them has made me uh, take another look at the quality of photos on our about page. I understand I've gotten some uh, feedback about that and we are going to, <laughs> we're gonna do some things to, uh, to improve those. But Jamie Lynn, you wanna, take it, introduce yourself, and then hand it off to Victoria. I'd love to. Thank you, Charles, for the warm welcome. Hi, everyone. Nice to either e meet to or see you again. I think I see some familiar faces, but I'm going to go ahead and do a full introduction of myself um, just so that we can get to know each other. This is a part of building community. So thank you for your um, warm welcomes in the chat. I appreciate that. Um, so my name is Jamie Lynn Wheeler. 
Uh, fun fact about my name is that I was named after my parents, James and Linda Wheeler. Um, and I, some people can get confused because they're like, is it Jamie Lynn? Is it Jamie? Um, really, I go by either Jamie Lynn. Um, I keep that to honor both of my parents. And um, it's easier some, for some people just to say Jamie and a lot of my close friends and family call me Jamie. So either way, happy with either name. A um, little bit about my background and currently where I'm at. I'm the incoming uh, field work and advocacy director at CP. I'm gonna be part-time here at CP until November. I'll come on full-time and you may ask, why is that? Why are you waiting until November to come on um, full-time? And the reason for that is because I'm going to stay at my current job. I did commit to my current job that I would stay through the, out the midterms. I'm uh, currently in the political world. I work at Fuse Washington. Um, some of you may know Fuse, uh, we're based here in Seattle serving Washingtonians, and you may know us through the Progressive Voters Guide, um, it may be a tool that some of you use to fill out your ballots every year, and we went uh, nationwide a couple of years ago. So anyways, my commitment to them was that I would help them through the midterms, and so I'm really excited to do that. I'm the deputy executive uh, director there. And interestingly enough, I started at Fuse um, eight years ago um, as an associate there. Um, I worked my way into a manager role, then into a director role, and now I'm deputy director. So I think that's a testament to um, doing what CP does and really uh, investing in young people and rising leaders. I'm really um, fortunate to have started eight years ago with not a lot of experience in the political world except for my own interest. And now to be where I'm at today and to be coming into CP is really special. So um, I know that you all are here because you believe in that. And so um, I just wanna say that I celebrate being able to be an example of that. Um, a little bit of personal background about me too is that um, I am a mixed race. I uh, had a black mother and a white father. Um, I did become an orphan uh, last year at the age of 31, um, and I am an only child, so I lost both of my parents. Um, and that really was a pivotal learning point in my life. Um, and I, I, you know, my parents taught me everything that I know, and I really find it fortunate that um, I was their daughter. I am their daughter, and that they are my parents. Um, my, my mom was black, my dad was white, and they also uh, were born in the 40s and 50s, respectively. And so the people who I grew up around, my grandparents, my parents, um, their friends were all born in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. So those are the um, generations that I grew up with my entire life and who taught me everything that I know today. And so I think, you know, there's this really good article um, that ta Coates wrote, who some of you may know, who's an author in The Atlantic, um, that's titled My President Was Black regarding Barack Obama and his presidency. And um, he talked a little bit about, he interviewed Barack, and um, Barack had said that he felt a tremendous privilege that he, um, some of his first experiences with white folks, for example, were with his grandparents and his mother who were very loving and kind to him. Those were the first experiences he had with white people. And that really spoke to me because that's the same, the same um, experience that I had. Um, I have been raised by and surrounded by folks from different generations and multiracial, um, multiracial groups. And it's always been rooted in love and support and that has really inspired me. Um, and is really make, has made me who I am today. And so that's another reason why I've come to CP and I'm so motivated because um, that's what CP does is bring folks across generational and racial um, lines and different experiences that we all have. And um, so it really seems to fit for me. And that's why I'm really honored to be here uh, with all of you. Um, I'm from Olympia, Washington. Uh, I was always involved in politics, just given my parents, they worked um, in government. And I think I started knocking on my first doors uh, when I was in grade school with my mom. 
Um, she worked really hard to get uh, Governor Christine Gregoire elected for her first term. And um, I've always just been surrounded by this. So uh, I went to the University of Washington and studied political communication there. And um, yeah, that's what, who I am, a little bit about me. And I appreciate so much of your warmth, um, love and support. And I'm really looking forward to getting to know all of you here in the future. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to someone who I've known for four days now, but who I am really, really happy to uh, introduce and have really got, had a great time getting to know. And that's Victoria. Yay, well, thank you, Jamie, for that. Um, hello, everyone. It is so nice to see everyone's face. I'm looking super excited to, you know, work with you all and get to know you all. Um, I am Victoria. I'm Victoria Elias. Um, I am joining, I'm brand, super brand new to CP, um, but I am joining as the state team organizing associate. Um, ex again, it's uh, excited to be here. Um, I am from Brooklyn, New York, born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. Um, I'm based out of Brooklyn, New York. I am a child of Haitian immigrants. Um, and I, I love that, that that comes with stories in itself. Um, but um, I, I also have lived um, in Buffalo, New York. I, I, I attended my undergrad in Buffalo, New York, and I love that. And then I later went on to live and work in Washington, D.C. for a couple of years. I had the privilege and opportunity to work for uh, Congressman, well, now Chairman Hakeem Jeffries. Um, and then I later went on to work um, for a progressive lawyers association out there. Um, and so I've always just really been involved in like and engaged with like civic and community engagement. Um, that's always where has that's always where my heart has been. Um, and then more recently, I moved back to New York um, and I had the opportunity to work on a New York City Council campaign out here um, in Brooklyn's 40th district. And um, that was really exciting because I got to work for a candidate that was um, really passionate about getting young people of color out to vote, um, particularly young men of color out to vote, um, and especially in the primaries. Like in the district that he was running in, it was less than 1% of young people um, that voted in the primaries. And so um, that was really exciting because I got to really be creative and innovative with our like voter outreach strategies and our engagement strategies. And so um, I got to plan like these, I learned that that district was a high biker district. And so I got to do like, um, uh, I coordinated a bike ride across the district that really um, turned into a voter registration drive. Um, and then we would go to like the basketball courts when it went night, when it was nice outside to like get folks, get these men registered to vote. Um, and then I don't know what it was like in your cities and states, but out here during, during COVID, um, the men turned the jungle the parks and the playgrounds into their own gyms and so they would bring like bench presses out there and like weights um to the to the parks and so my my candidate was like we're going out there we're gonna we're bringing voter registration cards and we're gonna register them to vote and we did that like every morning for a couple of weeks um just registering folks uh folks to vote um and so i, I just really enjoyed that and i just knew i wanted to be a part of um an organization where i felt like you know, I, I could be myself and I could um, share my ideas and be creative. Um, and so um, I just knew joining CP where I knew um, they were doing really meaningful, impactful work was a perfect uh, position for me. And so I look forward um, to being able to be that creative and that innovative and in, in strategy and however that turns out. Um, but I also look forward to being able to work with all of you and get to know all of you, but then also be a resource to all of you as well. So um, super excited to be here and um, yeah, thank you. I guess um, that's Charles, yeah. Yeah, I mean, y'all are impressive. My goodness gracious. And you did not need to write anything down. That was wonderful. Just talking about you like went in places where I didn't even think you would go. That's great. Hearing about the tactics you used and stuff. I was ready to talk tactics. Um, I want to go back to Jamie though, because I, I, Victoria has been enough. I got one question for Victoria though, real quick. Uh, no relation to Mark Elias, right? I just wanted to see. No, people always ask me that. No relation, no. But I, I, I take the name proudly, like that. Yeah. Okay. No I just had to, you know, if 
if we could, you know, connect to Mark Elias like that, you know, if he's like, you know, if he's family or something, you can, you know, keep that sacred off. The <laughs> I'm joking. I'm messing around. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, Jamie Lynn. So this, uh, we got another slide here because it talks about the fact that you're not super brand new to CP. Uh, you go, you go way back to the beginning and I want to, just I want to call out a couple pieces here. Some folks are probably looking at this going, that's me. Um, bottom left is Jamie Lynn with uh, Jordan, who's leading our team in North Carolina. Um, the one above that, it's got uh, Donna there right next to you. And Carrie, Carrie's right there. Uh, Donna is on the on the leadership team for Team Georgia, and Carrie's on the leadership team for Team Wisconsin. Um, and then the picture on the left is March third, twenty eighteen, and that's a selfie right there. Um, but I wanted to throw these up here as just like a grounding for you in the past, in the very beginning of CP, which was common purpose at the time. Yeah, so that's my cue, right? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Great, thank you, thank you. Um, so I know that there are some team leads in the room today. And so uh, I'm, I'm talking to you all and everybody else. Um, I just want to preface this by letting you know that I'm really, really excited to get to learn from all of you. Um, the, the process by which you've all developed to actually get on the ground and roll up your sleeves. And, um, and I know that you all have a structure that you've been working with. And so really I'm here to follow your expertise and get your guidance first so that I know how to help steward things along with you um, in coordination together. Um, I think it's really apropos that Charles showed those pictures. I uh, started off at CP, com what was then Common Purpose, uh, in 2018. I think I came to one of the first planning meetings um, and I came there in a volunteer capacity. A friend had told me about it and I just went given my interest in politics. Um, and I ended up becoming a, the Washington State lead. So I got to do all things Washington State and um, you know, it was it was a midterm. It was a midterm in 2018, and then we went on from there. And I did other cycles with CP as a volunteer, and then um, and, and more of a contract role in 2020. Um, and so, something that I remember from those days is that we would this was pre pandemic. We would have people come into a space at Washington Hall or wherever we were. And we would do trainings for everybody who came, you know, was really wanting and itching to get out onto the field, whether that be in Washington state or um, nationally. And I still remember doing, um, you know, your basic 101 trainings on how do you go up to a door? Let's model this for everybody in the room. Let's practice. What do you say? What's a script? Um, I still, I remember another day where we printed off voter registration forms and we gave everybody pens and gave everyone a training on how to, to register somebody to vote at outside of the mall or at a market. And, um, and then we let people break and do that. So we did a lot of hands-on just like trainings and we know from what community tells us, from what the statistics tell us and data tell us that the best way to move the needle um, and to get people out to vote and um, on issues that you know we all care deeply about is to get out and talk to people and to register people and talk to them about um, their fears and hopes and um, you know and, and the and the candidates on the ground who they could potentially support. And so, to the team leads in the room, you know I know that there's there tends to be a lot of different things that you have to check off as far as okay I got I got to attend this and do that and. Um, plan this and coordinate and administer and but at the end of the day I think it really boils down to and can I don't mean to oversimplify it but the simple fact that like we're all here rooted in one vision um, and one hope for the future and the um, simplest thing that you can do that we all know works is to go and talk to people and so that's what you all are doing when you deploy on the ground um, in your key states that you have taken on that you care about um, and so, you know, 
I know that there's lots of hoops to jump through and everything like that, but at the end of the day, it all boils down to how do we talk to people? How do we empower people? How do we turn people out? Um, and so I just want to stay rooted in that and know that I, we have a lot to learn from one another. And I want you all to know and have a peace of mind that there have been a lot of changes and things that, you know, we're, we're nimble and that's a good thing. Um, and so sometimes changes can be hard and a little bit confusing, but I'm really here to um, be something that you can tether to and to learn more about your processes. And I really want to get feedback from you all and how these things are going. I know a lot of you are going on trips soon um, in preparation for primaries, which is really exciting and important work. Um, and I just want you to know I'm going to be in touch with you all um, and I'm going to meet you where you're at and you're, where you communicate. And I hear that that's on um, IO. So I'm going to learn how to navigate that and be on there and be in touch with you here in the next week. Um, to really learn and get some more specifics about the next stages of what you're going to be doing in the next week and make sure that we all can be on the same page so that there's no confusion and that everybody feels comfortable and happy to move forward. And then um, from there, we'll reassess and talk a little bit about your experiences and how we can take your expertise um, and, and change whatever where and wherever you see fit. So um, I just want you to know those things that like this, at the end of the day, we're rooted on one common goal and it is a little bit more simple than it may seem um, uh, that I will be in touch with you and that I am looking forward to getting to learn and grow from, and from your, all of your experience um, and that, yeah, that we'll be in touch. And I know that Victoria and the rest of the CP team that I'm gonna be working with, Kylie, um, Maria, MJ, uh, Maggie and others, I really, really thank you for um, bringing me along and for teaching me all that you do. And uh, yeah, looking forward to it. So thank you. That's, that's awesome. And I am, um, it's amazing that you even are able to give us some of your time over these next few months, Jamie, but that, that, that shows how awesome you are. Um, and Victoria's going to get a lot of benefit from having you around in these, these, uh, the coming weeks. Thank you. Okay. Um, and you got to run, right? But you're going to be around uh, on .io. You, you're going to be around .io in the coming weeks yes. or coming days, probably tomorrow. Uh, Victoria is going to be on there like daily. I'm just going to throw that out there. I'll put that out. But Victoria is going to be on .io and you're going to be able to reach out to both of, both of them on .io through the regular channels. I know teams are traveling and people are super busy, so don't feel obligated to reach out to the two of them right now. Um, but they're going to be available through the platform that we mobilize on, which is mobilize.io, commonpower.io. Um, and then you'll see other things come later. Uh, Jamie has talked about uh, meetings for team leads, meetings for all the field work. Those are going to roll out. Some get to know you stuff and then some also some... Um, you know, here's the new, here's the new plan. Here's what we're doing going forward. Uh, I'm excited to have you back, Jamie. Victoria, I'm excited for the, the wisdom you're going to bring from the Northeast and all of the innovation that sounds like you did there. I love how we're getting back on the ground at the same time that you're joining us. So, I mean, we're going to like follow you in many ways. Um, this is awesome. This is good. It's how exactly how it should be. Okay. All right. So uh, to hear about, that, I mean, this was like going forward. Well, Wisconsin just happened. Wisconsin was a team that just traveled and we want to hear from them. We want to hear, have them tell us how it went. Um, Wisconsin is one of our most experienced teams. Um, they're also, um, they've been around since, the, since 2018. Uh, as you can see from the pictures, uh, the last pictures and these pictures, Carrie and Frieda were both there on the first day. Um, and some of the success of that team is just based around the community they've built and the people who are passionate about that state and have adopted it as their own. Uh, ben, I heard that, you know, as the newest team lead, you've been picked to represent and kind of organize the team in their reflections. Yeah, I got this. You got this. Yes, that is like the most certain term that has been stated this entire meeting. Ben saying, I got this. You can put money on that, y'all. <laughs> I can leave the meeting now, actually. Ben, yeah, ben. literally tickle rest, Charles. You're like, 
<laughs> okay. I'm, I'm going to tip, tip over. You got it, Ben. All right. Hey, y'all. Um, so Team Wisconsin, uh, we recently traveled at the end of March, and I won't go into too much details because there's going to be people who will love to give you that much detail. Um, but to get a little bit of a rundown, we spent five days canvassing. We talked to um, about 2,000 voters, people. And um, well, actually, we try to talk to about 2,000 people. We actually talked to about 360 of them, so which is pretty good. So now um, I want to invite some of our volunteers to share their experience, some of the reflections and insights they got from the trip. Mm, all right, Liz, are you here? Yes, I am. All right, take it away. Hi, Ben. Hi, Ben. So good to see you. And yeah, I just, um, I just wanted to say I am just in awe of what Ben, what Kara, Carrie, what Frida, um, and then the newest member, Claire, who just showed up and just dove right in, just absolutely set the tone. Um, ben, like the super efficiency of Ben is off the charts, as Charles alluded to. Um, really, really fun. Let's see, I've got something going on here. Um, so yeah, so I, I think it, there's so many different stories. The first thing is I am new to this team. I almost talked myself out of going because I thought, oh, I don't know, maybe it's been gerrymandered and this and that, and I don't know if this election will really count. Well, it, it, it number one, it did count, and number two, um, it's it is all about community. It was it's at least as much for the people going on these trips as as it is for anything else. To, um, to buttress the local organization. That is a huge part of this. So I felt like that happened. We were able to go to a local um, uh, um, Wisconsin Dems uh, organization that hadn't had anybody show up because it was so cold. And boy, we really brought a good spirit to that. And that was, I think, so needed. Um, the other, um, I'll just share really quickly, a couple of my uh, the people that I knocked on doors that were kind of highlights of 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 that those interactions, knocked uh, not knocked went into a, um, a high rise, and um, I remember went through the list. It was the last one, fifth floor, and a guy answered and he said, um, "Yeah, you know, her name was Lena. She, you know, just wait a sec, she'll be down." And I I couldn't imagine that I heard what he said that she was going to actually take time come down and see us, she did. It turned out she had been working for the Board of Elections and then she had been the director of the Board of Elections. And what were the chances? So at any rate, she also worked for um, Tammy Baldwin and um, she had heard of CP and she is thinking she may be ready to get back involved. So that was like a needle in a haystack, very cool conversation. Um, uh, the other thing is just the way that CP weaves in so much of the fun with the work. I just, it, you just end up on cloud nine after these trips. And I think everybody felt that way. Um, last thing I wanted to say was there was a couple who lives in Seattle. I come from, from Sun Valley and they put me up. They don't have to happen to be on this call. They put me up because I had a layover and that just set the tone. It made me it made me feel so um, cared about and that extended throughout the entire trip. And then of course, the last thing is Heba's birthday party with her mom making all that incredible food. Um, it just, you know, it was, the, it was the meaning of community. So that's, that's my sharing. Lovely, thank you so much, Liz. Um, okay, I wanna invite Tira and then Claire, who is our newest team lead, but I also wanna be conscious of the agenda. I know CP runs on CP time, but like we usually end at six. So Tira, Claire, um, please share your stories. Um, but like keep it to maybe like two minutes, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, hey, thanks so much. Um, my name's Tira, and I it's really nice to see some of my team Texas and Team Florida people on the call too. So I've been on uh, several trips. So it's really fun to go to Wisconsin this time. It was the most fun because. We, because I just wanted to get out and talk to real people with real people. And that was just tremendous to get back out there. And you just get out there and go and, you know, follow the protocols and you'll be um, um, as safe as you can be. Uh, and it's just a fabulous experience. All, I just wanted to say that um, the anti-oppression training that we were all required to do prior to the, to the um, 
tra to travel was um, really, really well done. And I copied out the materials from that and I brought them with me to Wisconsin because I wanted to keep them alive. And I wanna encourage all the, the old white people here to um, go to that training, take it super seriously, and then figure out how to make it real when you travel. Um, Charles and I had a really fun conversation in the car one day because I was super impatient um, because it was taking us a long time to get out to do doors. And like one of the, one of the um, uh, habits um, that support white supremacy is, um, is, I have it even here, I have it right here, uh, quantity over quality. Because I was just like, we got to knock on a lot of doors. And the fact of the matter is Cavalier Johnson, who we were working for, wanted us to knock on a lot of doors. And so there's this whole like dynamic all the time of quantity versus quality. And um, Charles, if I can, I hope that I can, um, this is what I heard you say that I think was so incredibly profound. Go for it, Jira. And that is um, that um, we can get a lot of quantity out there and get Cavalier Johnson elected to be mayor. But what we really need is, is um, the quality of conversation and the quality of community that will not only get him into office, but will help him succeed in dealing with the really critical problems that Milwaukee is having. And so it's just not good enough to win. Although I will admit it was really fun to win that race. Um, but um, it's not just about that winning. It really is about the quality of the, of the democracy that he brings to that, um, to that office and to that setting. So that was just so important for me to understand um, that perspective. So Charles, thanks a million for um, helping me out there. <laughs> That's perfect. And thank you. I want to echo in the chat. Um, thank you for bringing up the anti-racism training. I think that is um, a big highlight and it is a, like um, a core part of how successful we are um, this trip around. OK, now, Claire, I know you're here. I know you tried really hard to be here, so I want to spotlight you right now. Um, Claire is our newest team lead for Team Wisconsin. This is her first time canvassing ever ever. She got introduced to CPA like two months ago. All right, Claire, take it away. What'd you get from this? <laughs> Thanks for hyping me up, Ben. <laughs> um, yeah, this was my very first canvassing trip. Like Ben said, I just, I'm super new to Common Power in general. I have been a state team lead for less than a month. Um, and I'm just super grateful to have joined Team Wisconsin. They're such an experienced team. And I really just want to shout out Ben for like holding down the fort for the first few days and really laying the groundwork for um, that volunteer organizing work. And it was super easy to take on once Frida and I got there. So thank you so much. And just to have Frida and Carrie's wisdom and knowledge, like I learned something from them every time we meet. Um, so I'm really grateful for that team. Um, and something else, I mean, Tara and Liz touched on a lot of points that I think were highlights for me as well. Um, but I just wanted to mention um, just having a more holistic experience by being on the ground and learning about the actual communities that we're going out into, both planned and unplanned. So I guess a planned example is we went to the Bronzeville district and we went to, uh, we went as a group to visit America's Black Holocaust Museum. And that was super insightful and I think really powerful and set the tone for the work that we were doing. Um, and then also just unplanned things like we stumbled onto this community garden and it was um, really nice to talk to the guy who owned that entire property and he was just so welcoming and nice and um, just having those like human connections and like talking to people out in the community about the work they're doing. Um, we also ran into people from Power to the Poles who are also out there in those neighborhoods doing the good work and um, it was nice to know that like we were a part of a movement, like some momentum going on in Milwaukee. So it was nice to be a part of that. Um, and yeah, I'll cut it short there, but also Team Texas, y'all might see me in May. So I'm excited to possibly join y'all and I'm from Harris County. So that was a really cool opportunity to know about and I'm excited just to meet more faces and uh, be in person with you all. So thanks. That's right. You're going to be here a lot more. That was semi threat. Um, so I'm going to turn it back to whoever is like reading, leading this, either David with the slides or Charles with everything else. We're good. Wait, uh, Ben, my goodness. 
Um, you recruited Claire. I just wanted to give you your flowers for that because Claire didn't just magically bring her awesomeness here. You recognized it and then asked her to join. So kudos to you for that. Um, I also want to say that getting getting um, kudos from Liz Corker and Tira Lindquist, who have both traveled with other teams and have been around CP for a while, that is super meaningful. The two of them are uh, experienced canvassers by now. I know you don't feel that, like that, Liz and Tira, but if you've been doing it for years now, you're experienced canvassers. So Ben, all of the things they said about you and your leadership, those are real things. Those are real, real things. So anyways, you know how awesome you are. Whatever, whatever, Ben. <laughs> you're good, good. Um, okay, so if you're fired up to travel, if you're traveling already, thank you. <laughs> thank you for, for committing to that, that awesome work, important work in person on the ground. Um, if not though, uh oh, Dave, what are we doing? Okay, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. Here we go. Uh, here's some here's some stuff to think about. If you're thinking about traveling and you haven't nailed down, these are right around the corner. So sorry if these are kind of short term. If you can make it work, then fine. If not, the fall will be here. We'll be traveling in the fall also. But these teams, if you can make them work, are traveling here soon. Um, North Carolina right around the corner. South Carolina kind of overlaps with that and goes to the 25th. Uh, team Arizona is traveling from May 1st to May 6th. And then Team Texas is traveling from May 19th to May 22nd. The best way, the only way to get involved with these teams is to join commonpower.io, join those team um, groups, and then hear from those team leads about how to get on the list, how to get prepared, what trainings to go to, all that. But it's not, it's not too late. Um, there's also virtual action going on every week here. Phone banks all the time. Some of them are on the website and some of them are not on the website. Again, commonpower.io is our platform where all of this is, is housed. That's where the latest things are, are posted. Sometimes we'll have a plan for something that goes you know, out into the future. And at the last minute, one of our team leads will get a call and they'll get canceled or something like that. That will be communicated on .io, the latest. The website is, you know, kind of, sort of awesome, but not, not so much. Go to .io. Um, and then finally, COVID protocols. David, you wanted to mention something about COVID protocols here. You got like 40 seconds, man. We created a CP travel compact focused on COVID protocols back in the fall when we started to travel again. And those have guided us through trips to Virginia, to Wisconsin, to Texas, uh, to Alabama, to Wisconsin again. We're gonna continue those protocols. They're gonna be uh, a, the same, a same for all of our teams, even though COVID and the CDC has relaxed their protocols. Ours are not um, over the top. They're just solid approaches about taking a PCR test before you go or two at home tests about symptoms to pay attention to them, about forehead temperature checks. We're gonna to continue to do that. So if you're interested in traveling or wondering about that with our field work, we will continue to continue our, we will continue our protocols. They have served us well. We will never bat a thousand and get, never have an instance of COVID, but so far we're on a winning streak. All right. And so we're going to keep it going as best we can. I know that there are differences of opinion. We know there are differences of opinion about COVID. We are always going to go as far as we can reasonably safely to make a difference in democracy. So. Thanks, man. Um, what's that poster behind you? Is that Freedom Riders? It is. This one over here is the Freedom Riders. All of those are mug shots. From the freedom from a whole bunch of freedom riders who uh you know we're in 1961 because part of what we do when we go to alabama on our foundations mm -hmm. trips is we meet with some of the freedom riders and we go to the museum and so that's the yeah that's a poster and of course that's one of them john Amer lewis. american hero john lewis yes yeah. teaser for the institute uh dr terry scott's not here today to talk about it but that launches in june we're going to get a freedom writer who's here a couple of them they're going to come 
and join us for the launch in June. Um, <laughs> That's true. Gonna... But also, Charles, sorry, th this one over here is the Mariners. Okay. And is. this is the year, people. I don't this know what is, is the year. What is okay? that? Is it like a boat? Or I'm going to vote. Look, Victoria, are you are you a Mets or a Yankees fan? I'm just wondering. I, I don't pay attention, but um, we'll yeah, go with Yankees. How about that? <laughs> Smart person, like twenty thousand championships. That's solid. Yeah, I just uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, that uh, that's a nice hobby. All right. Um, okay. <laughs> Sasha said, "Leave them alone." Sasha, it's Sasha's turn. Sasha, uh, so Action Academy, we've, we've seen at the very beginning, at the very beginning, the person who said hi to everybody was here through Action Academy. Action Academy, uh, Ben was a part of Action Academy. Action Academy is a major pipeline into our team leads, into our teams generally. It is a, a reinvigorating lifeblood here at CP. And they just launched their application on April 1st. We're going to have Sasha and Larcy talk about how that's going. We're only going to hear about part of it, though, because apparently they're, they're not looking at, at some of the numbers. Um, but we're going to have, we're going to have a, a Sasha screen share here. So make sure you give her permission, please, David. Sasha. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, David did make me co-host, so I'll be able to share. Um, but uh, Larcy, did you want to kick things off and then, um, or... Uh... Am I going to be the one leading it here? Yes. Hi, everybody. Um, I am kind of parallel to my bed at the moment. Um, just enough energy to really, really celebrate and highlight how excited we are with this year's cohort. This is our fourth cohort in our third year of Action Academy. And we are going big because big terms require big. Um, so yes, it is a paid internship. They spend a lot of time with us. They're gonna hang out with us throughout the summer and also start the pipeline into uh, bringing them into your, into your team. So you've already had them travel with you. We're gonna bring that much more. And the reason why uh, we need your help also is that if you do have anyone who is in your life, who's 18 and above and is kind of on the fence or maybe just need a little bit more direction about where to get engaged, please send them our way. So that is your homework from tonight is find Larcy and Sasha, some more young people. Um, because one thing that Sasha has done these past several months is literally took our previous curriculum and, and added so much care and thought into what the students are gonna journey through Action Academy and why people like a Ben or a Jessica or a Brayden or an Ani want to do that much more. We do catalyze them. And as and, and in, just, in just a second here, uh, Sasha's gonna share what this year's syllabus is gonna look like. Um, we are also bringing on some foot soldiers um, from, from the civil rights movement. We're bringing in some folks to talk about how, how to sift through the noise of misinformation and disinformation. We got some training that's gonna happen from community organizers. It is crazy deep curriculum. And I just wanna applaud Sasha for just really putting a lot of, of Sasha's touches in that. So <laughs> Sasha, take it away and yeah, blow their minds away because it is an impressive curriculum. Sorry, I was talking. <laughs> I forgot to take myself off mute. Um, thank you so, so much, Larcy, um, for fighting your COVID cough to get that out there and let folks know what we're up to. Um, and thank you again, everyone, for coming here tonight. Um, yeah, we have definitely have put some sweat and tears um, into this curriculum, and we're really, really excited. Um, applications launched on April 1st, and I kind of cheated. I took a look at the numbers, and they look good, y'all. They look good. Oh, so excited. Okay, I'm gonna try to keep it together. Um, <laughs> so excited, y'all. Um, and you'll know why just because I'm gonna tell you about this curriculum, and then you're gonna be like, okay, now I see it. Um, so basically, this year's curriculum is divided into three modules, as y'all already know, Mindset, Mojo, Mobilize. We've been drilling that into y'all ever since you started with us here at CP. And so basically, that is um, how our modules are going to be broken up. So Mindset, 
It's all about the history. We're making sure students know the background. We're talking about the start of a lot of our American, I mean, democratic institutions, our documents, how did we get here? I mean, as you can see here, like Dr. Terry Scott, she's gonna be leading just a whole week's like worth of content and students are gonna be engaged. I mean, she's already gonna, she already has uh, plans where they're gonna try to take like some of those literary, literacy tests um, that were given to folks. And um, trust me, folks are, I mean, we took it on our staff trip and we struggled. It was a hard time. So I think these students are really just gonna have the opportunity to um, really put that theory like onto or into words and onto paper. Um, Bob, you're probably, this is the, probably the first time you're seeing this. You will be a part of one of the sessions. So please mark your calendar for July 19th. Um, but yeah, we're gonna have the students get a chance to listen to stories and like ask questions of foot soldiers, which we're really excited about. Um, going into the second module, you'll see here, it's all about mojo. So students are gonna learn what is their advocacy style? How do they start engaging with their communities? How do they do it sustainably? We're gonna have panels, which I mean, all these young people, folks under 30 are gonna be coming in and be talking about their experience. And again, students are gonna be able to ask questions of them. We even got the hookup from Maggie, shout out to Maggie, who connected us with um, an individual from Run for Something, which is an incredible organization, which is all about getting young BIPOC folks under the age of 25 to run for office, and they're going to be running a session with us. We're just, oh my gosh, Larcy and I are so amped about it. Um, and then the last third, like I said, it's all about mobilizing. So we are pulling in everybody from CP, everyone in our um, network to talk about well, what can we do next, right? They learned the history, they learned what their advocacy style is and what they wanna do in their communities. And now how do they do it? We're always plugging them in for opportunities at CP with our um, connections with of course the state teams. And so we're bringing everyone in and then a really cool piece um, that will sort of round out the whole experience with is having our wonderful Anita come in and talk about, okay, right? How do you now take all of these cool experiences that you've been learning about and engaging in for the last nine to 10 weeks and get that into a resume and into a CV. How do you develop your narrative and talk about this right to other people in all different types of spaces and backgrounds. And so we're super grateful to have her in there. Um, yeah, we're just, we're excited. And we are, of course, so, so thankful to everybody who's been nonstop supportive of like sharing links and like making sure to forward along emails and everything that we've been sending out. Um, so thank you again, everyone. And we, again, uh, had launched applications. And so that was April 1st. Applications will close May 13th. Um, however, we are flexible. If people are still needing to get their applications in, we'll extend that deadline. Um, but yeah, we're just, we're really amped about it. And um, yeah, we're just, we're keeping our fingers crossed. Like I said, the numbers are looking good so far. So fingers crossed. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Should I say I'm passing it back to David or Charles? <laughs> Charles is not on the screen. We're hoping everything is okay over there. No, I right? did. Okay. <laughs> I'll I'll totally chime in. Um, so I think what we've decided with the attack on CRT and the way that the historical curriculum is being attacked, we want to lean in on our curriculum. We want truthful history. This isn't somebody's opinion. We have PhDs of folks who've come here and built their life on the subjects that we're having them come in to talk about. And it is, uh, it is remarkable that, you know, uh, not, not, yes, it's remarkable, but also that they agree that this is truthful stuff. They agree that this stuff should actually be taught and also heard and also applied. So one more time, we they get paid because they spend a lot of time with us. That's, tw you know, that's 12 weeks and sessions are about an hour and a half, twice a week, in addition to community building, to, you know, being in their own crew teams. Um, so there's a lot of time, sometimes upwards to 10 hours a week that they do spend within the programs um, cycle. And then after that, they get to build their own community and they discover their own leadership style and, and what uh, uh, Sasha was saying, their, their advocacy style and how they're going to and how they're going to bring that back to the community. And of course, they're going to engage. They have to engage. We're going to commit to making sure that they are 
somewhere on the ground in front of a potential voter. That is the commitment. And we just want to make sure we're going to on-ramp them for that in that particular journey. Um, yes, it is remote. So uh, in the past, we have had a total of over 26 colleges and schools that have joined um, <laughs> our program remotely and from 19 different states. So we encourage students to apply to this because it's easily accessible. Okay, back over to you, Charles. Thank you all. And really looking forward to this cohort. We'll be announcing um, when we will welcome them and you will all be uh, updated on what's to come. Sorry, Sorry I was waiting for Larcy to stop coughing. <laughs> <laughs> We've got these timed unmutes that are around when we're one of us is hacking or not. Um, all right, that's super impressive. Sasha, are there more questions in the chat you want to answer? I think everyone now wants to sign up their children, grandchildren, second cousins. Carrie, Carrie's got one. Yeah, how big are the cohorts? How many kids are you taking? So this year, our goal is to get around 105. Um, and it's that specific number because we figured we could break up that number into seven state teams <laughs> equally. Um, so <laughs> we're going to start there. And then, you know, if we have the capacity, we can build that in and then we can get even bigger numbers. But we want it to be big, but then also we want it to be just intimate enough to where we can like build out that community, have those community conversations on Fridays, have the after credits, after sessions. Um, but yeah, there have been, I think collectively over the last two to three cohorts, it's been around around 100. So this is going to be the first time that it's going to be over 100 in just one cohort alone. Wow, that's great. Okay. <laughs> you know, I wanted just to jump in and use this opportunity to mention that on May 11th, this will be coming out and publicized in our newsletter next week. Julia G is working on this uh, with us and donor work. We're going to do an Action Academy fundraiser. Okay. Julia, you want to give a shout out to that fundraiser here? Yes, absolutely. Hi, everyone. It's good to see you guys. I hope you guys enjoy. If you're in Seattle, I hope you enjoyed the really nice day of weather today. I was like sitting at my desk just soaking up all the sun. Um, well, anyways, so yeah, next month we are planning on hosting the 2022 Action Academy fundraiser on May 11th from 5 to 6 p.m. We're going to have a bunch of awesome Action Academy speakers. These are students from former cohorts. Um, we'll have a little bit of trivia, and then we'll have an ask at the end for you to support our Action Academy programming um, going into summer. So more details on that to come, but I'm super excited to um, debut that fundraiser. Okay, um, that's good. The Action Academy piece, you know, there's always this like ideal number. And then you get to the point where you have to say no to somebody and you can't, you can't say no. <laughs> so Sasha, I hope you get your 105 right on the dot. Okay, but I, I have a feeling it's going to be more. So we'll see. Can you, uh, and I know that you weren't supposed to look at numbers, but now that you did, um, I'm pretty sure that David and other people immediately wanted to know what the number was. I don't know if you're allowed to tell, but I would like to know. So the application has been open for <laughs> a week, Mike, or actually, yeah, it'll be a week tomorrow. And if I counted right, because I like tried to do a little quick, a little quick look, um, but <laughs> And it didn't work. I was staring at those numbers. I was like, so um, we have 15. And mind you, last year, it was like a slow trickle in. But this is like opened within seven days. We have 15 applicants, which I'm super excited about. So hopefully that's good news. Advertising has been going well. We just need to keep pushing it out there. So I Very hope good. that would be a good problem to have to tell people no, instead of like trying to get more folks to come in really good good stuff good stuff okay all right well um and with students you know that there's a you know 
there's like a, a wait to the last minute type thing. So I don't know if there are any teach former teachers that are here that can attest to that <laughs> kind of mentality. Um, David, it looks like it's like midnight where you're at. And I don't know how that happened. It like transformed to that. Yeah, it's really weird. All right, y'all. That's the end of our of our session. Um, it's 6.07. You have now reached the official after credits portion of CP meetings where I and others hang out until um, the last person leaves. If you have questions or like things that you want to talk about, anybody? David, you want to stop recording?